welcome to this tutorial where we are going to look at some javascript console methods beyond the commonly used console.log that we are all used to so you remember when uh, even if you want to print some error into the console you just use console.log and then you pass the error message and, and things like that yeah i mean all of us used to do that i used to do that a lot i mean i still do that sometimes yeah i understand because uh, as developers that is what we are used to console.log we often rely on that to debug our code and also to track the flow of execution however javascript console offers a lot of powerful methods that can significantly enhance our debugging capabilities and uh, also make our logs more informative and organized i would say all right so yeah in this tutorial we are going to try to explore a variety of console methods uh, such as the console.error, console.one, uh, console.info, we also have console.table, .group, .time, .assets, and then others. All right. So each of these methods um, serves a unique purpose and it can provide you with uh, deeper insights into like what your code is actually doing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you examples, right? of how we can use these and uh, yeah hopefully you would know when to use them in your in your code so when you look at um, my code here you can see it's just a simple HTML file right? I have the console open at the other side here uh, in in the browser so uh, yeah I'm running this HTML file with live server and uh, you can see that I have a bunch of script files here uh, pointing to different files basically so these are the different examples we are going to try uh, so these are all files that I have I have them here so I will just comment them and then we try the examples as we as we move along all right all right so this is where we are going to be seeing the results right, in the console right here so the first one we are going to try is console.error as you can see right, so basically from the name console.error is basically used to uh, print some errors into into the console um, yeah so when you want to when you want to highlight errors in your in your code or in your console you can use console.error instead of using console.log right so uh, let me just uncomment this one and I'll try to open that file so console.error this one and here you just have to do console.error right, so for example I have a function check age which accepts age and then I'm checking if the age is less than 18 if it is less than 18 I'm just saying age must be 18 or older so your age I mean you should be 18 years or above All right, otherwise I'm just logging something here so if I call check agent at part 16, I want my log to throw an error or to show an error. So I just do console.error. Right, so as soon as I save this one and I check my console, as you can see, right, it looks like an error, which is saying age must be 18 or older. Right, it's basically coming from here. Right, so notice how I did console.error error instead of console.log nice now the next one is console.one so basically when you want to print something like a warning into the console so uh, let's go here as you can see we have some warning here that's the second one uh, so here check password uh, for example I want to check the length of my password should be uh, 8 or above so if it is less than 8 I am just going to throw a warning I'm going I'm going to show a warning to the user saying that password is too short right so this message is more like a warning so you can do something like console.warn instead of console.log right so it's gonna say password is too short and you can see how useful it is like when it prints in a console you see that as a warning and you can see this um, uh, icon here this warning icon here as well 
now the next one is console.info and you guessed it's just showing some info in there in the console All right so we have error we have one so we would basically have info as well so when you want to uh, show some info like the application has started successfully All right so if I try to save this one as you can see it is just an info and it's very it's very similar to console.log so the next one I want to show you is table All right so there is console.table and uh, let me open the file for that one as well so console.table and uh, yeah let me show you the first one so I have students it's basically an array of objects as you can see with name and then age and uh, instead of doing console.log student which is going to print just uh, objects to me I can do console.table and what this is going to do is it is going to log this in a table format All right, so I am going to hit save here and uh, let's see the console now check this out you can see very very nice All right, so it logs the object in a console format and it still knows that this is an array right as you can see here I mean after all it's just a console log but this is formatting it nicely in a table form so that we see the data properly in a nice format all right so when I open here it still knows that it is an array of objects as you can see here uh, so it locks it nicely name and then age now someone may ask what if we have a nested object all right so something like this we have students nested and uh, the extra objects we have or the nested objects we have is the address so the address inside the address we have city and then state all right now what happens if we log this uh, using console.table now if I uncomment this one let's see what happens um, I'm going to save it and uh, let's see now it still blocks it but you can see that the address is showing us an object right so it is showing us an object here it's able to like uh, render the nested objects to but then it will show it as an object here you can see so it basically means that when you have a nested object like you are still going to get the top level properties showing in the table now what you can do if you want to render uh, the nested objects in the table what you can do is to maybe flatten the object right so for example using something like this where I do students nested dot map and then I am going to return the city and then the state right and you can see I'm getting it from student or address or city student or address or state right, so this way I flatten it and then when I log it then I'll get a nice table all right with the city and then the state as well all right so that is very nice um, you can use console.table to log your data in a table format which is very nice like this basically so here you can still see that yeah the nested object actually works um, it's what I wanted to show you all right now what's the next one so we have console.group so let me uncomment that and uh, let me show you what is happening so as you can see here let's close this one let's open group all right nice so we have console.group actually not this one let's uh, we have two types the group all right yeah this one all right, so we have console.group and what this does is it basically groups your log right all the logs you have in the in the console logs it groups it and the way it groups it is now you can see there is a chevron here all right so I say console.group and then this is the title of the group student information 
and I do console.log, console.log, console.log. Now, all these logs are going to be grouped under this group, all right? So, as you can see, if I uh, close the chevron, you see that all the logs are collapsed under that particular group, which is the student information, all right? which is very very cool so you can use this to group your logs basically um i mean depending on how your data appears you can use this one to group them so we have the group and then when you want to end the group you do group end all right so if you don't do the group end whenever you add another console log it's still going to add it under this group now when i do group end and i do another console log after that you'd notice that that console.log is going to be different. So when I collapse it, that console.log is going to uh, be separate. I mean, it's not part of that group, right? Because I have ended the group. So that is what this group end is basically doing. Now let's look at a more advanced grouping with nested grouping and multiple groups, right? So uh, let me comment this one that is the next one here so let me also open the file for that um, group 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 yeah this one and uh, here let me clear the console and explain this to you now you can see that there is the top group which is student information and there is two logs and there is another group here with two logs Alright, uh, there is another group here, goes, 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 and then there is group end, group end, group end. Now, what this is doing is, here, it creates a group, and these logs are going to be under this group. Now, here we are creating another group, right? We create another group under the top group, so this is going to be a nested group under here. So, this group would have another group inside after these two logs. It would have another group inside with these two items under this group and then it would have another group inside uh, this one would also have another group under it with these logs all right so here it is going to rate student information this is the student information including this one the course information all right here and then under the course information we have the subjects as well and these are the subjects right so let me save it so that you see what i am talking about all right so here as you can see we have student information and under student information we have course information which is this one all right and then under course information we have subjects all right so when i collapse student information you see that all the other nested groups are collapsed or hidden because they are under this group so when i open it and i collapse this one you see that the third group is under course information right so this is how you can you can actually add nested groups or you can log next uh, nested groups in your, in your console basically so um so yeah mean you have a group within a group within a group so this group is within this group and then the subject is within this group All right and uh, here as you can see we end the group so when you end the group this is going to end this first group which is a subject and then you do another group end here it's going to end this one and then you do another group end here which is going to end the top one so when we do another group it means it is going to be separate right it's not going to be under student information because we've ended that so this is how you end the groups as i mentioned group end group end which is going to end the next one and then another group end which is going to end the next one and then you can start a new group like this have another group inside and the group with this one and then this one is going to end this group right very very useful if you want to i mean if you want to format your logs or your data uh in your logs very nicely in a group format i mean this is uh this is a way of 
uh, grouping your data in your in your log basically all right hopefully that is useful for you so let's look at the next one so the next one is uh, console.time all right so let me uncomment that one let me open a file so console.time very very simple so here you do console.time and uh, what this is going to do is it is going to start a timer or it is going to start a time which is going to keep track of whatever is happening here until you end the time right so we have console.time console.time end so let's say for example you have an asynchronous call or uh, like an API uh, which fetches some data from a server right and you want to keep track of how long that data or how long that um, that API call takes you can actually use console.time and console.time end to keep track of the time it takes for that server call to happen right, so in this case I'm just using a for loop and I am looping 10,000 times so uh, if I loop 10,000 times how long does it take for this loop to run so if I if I save it so save this one and let's check right, so we see loop timer it takes 0 0.97705 milliseconds for this loop to run that's because the loop is virtually not printing anything or doing anything right so it just it just um works i mean it just happens faster but if i add console.log for example uh I just add console.log log here so anytime it loops it should just print this it means it is going to take a much longer time because it is going to print this every time and then goes back right so let's actually see how long it takes for this loop to basically run and print this um let me save it so you can see it's logging thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand five thousand six seven eight nine and then it should stop nice so you can see it took six five six point this milliseconds for the loop to finish running which is very cool right, so yeah you can use console.time and console.time and to keep track of uh, some asynchronous logic or some code in between uh, how long that code takes to basically run nice so next is console.asset so console.asset is used to make assertions All right, so let me show you the example uh, let me save actually let me open a file before i save so we have asset All right and uh, here you can see very basic exa example let me expand this a little bit now this is saying x is equal to five and here I am just saying that x is greater than 10 now you can see clearly here that x is not greater than 10 x is equal to 5 which is uh, which means x is less than 10 so I am saying I am giving a condition here saying x is greater than 10 which is supposed to be false right so when I do console.asset I pass a condition and here I pass um, whatever should happen if the assertion fails or if the condition here fails so if the condition fails I'm just saying that print onto the console X is not greater than 10 all right this can be anything Th this can be any string at all uh, whenever the condition here fails right so it is going to assert that X is not greater than 10 so when I save it you'd say assertion failed x is not greater than 10 and that's because of this console.asset uh, and I am sure you'd remember this from maybe your unit testing or something like that where you run I mean where you assert that a value is equal to 
something and sometimes the assertion fails sometimes the assertion passes uh, so yeah this is very similar uh, at console.asset so the last one i'm going to talk about is console.count right so console.count is used to count um the number of times a specific log has been called all right so from the name um let's look at an example all right so i have this example here let me open a file count yeah this one all right so you can see here i am printing uh, there is a function here which accepts name that's what i am calling here and passing alice bob alice and you can see i am passing alice twice all right so i do console count and what it is counting is the name all right so i say greeting name so after that i print the console uh, i print hello name as well so you can see from here it said greeting alice one all right so prints one and then hello alice prints now bob prints once hello bob now it prints alice again uh, it sees alice again that's why the count is now two and then the prints happens so, I, so the number of times a particular log has been called the count actually is able to keep track of that uh, and it's able to count the number of times a particular log has been called so that is what the count is used for um yeah hopefully you found uh, these useful you can try to um uh, you can basically experiment uh, with these methods to see how they can improve your own development workflow but yeah hopefully you found it useful thank you for watching i'm going to see you in the next video